Feeling safe theory is a, is a theory that hypothesizes how experiences become fixated memories and the results of those fixations. Behavior for which beha uh, be uh, feeling state theory is useful for is understanding the psychological dynamics of behavioral addictions, codependence, sub substance addictions, anger, paraphilia, and even sometimes paranoia. The focus for today is going to be on behavioral addictions and substance addictions. And first we're going to talk about behavioral addictions. And the reason for that is people come in with a lot of assumptions about substance addictions. And so, but if you understand how to process a, a behavioral addictions, a behavioral addiction, then substance addictions is really just one more step beyond that. Okay? So it's just really simple after that. So examples of behavioral addictions, gambling, gambling compulsion, sex addiction, shopping compulsion, shoplifting, exhibition, voyeurism, etc. However, any behavior, any behavior can become a behavioral compulsion. That's why there's so many different kinds of, of behavioral, behavioral addictions. It's been actually way more than is ever in the DSM. Behavioral addictions, a first person feels compelled to do something even though they feel, even though they know there's going to be negative consequences. Now, the survival law of psychological dynamics. Um, what's interesting about this is I started this off as a bit of a joke, and it turned into something... <laughs> Really, use really powerful, very effective in understanding why addictions really incredibly important for understanding this. Now, in terms of the, we have to understand in the survival law, this is something so simple. You think that it's so obvious. Avoid pain. We avoid the terror of dying. Seek pleasure. Really obvious. It doesn't get any more obvious than this. And it seems so simple. Yet we violate this idea in our case conceptualization all the time. Um, in the survival law, we avoid pain. This is hardwired into us, by the way. We avoid pain. We're, trying, we're going to avoid the terror of dying. We are just going to avoid it. It's hardwired into us. <clears throat> if it weren't, we're not, the, the, for the people who were, who, this was not hard, hardwired into their brains, they're not around anymore, <laughs> all right? Their descendants didn't make it. We are the descendants of those who evolved so that the, what was left was we avoid pain and we avoid dying. We, we have developed mechanisms for doing this. But what this means is, when, if we avoid pain, how is it somebody cuts themselves? That certainly doesn't seem like pain, I mean, avoiding pain, does it? Okay? It's certainly, or a masochism, or somebody sabotaging his life. You would think, well, that's not, if the survival law is, is true, and I'm saying it's absolutely true, and that there are no violations ever of the survival law. There are no violations ever of the survival law. Okay? So how is it that somebody cuts themselves deliberately? It must mean that there's a positive feeling linked with that behavior. It always must mean that. And that's why you've had so much trouble dealing with these apparent beha behavioral addictions that's, that were obviously painful. So it must have a positive feeling linked with it. So if you think about cutting, what would be an example of a positive feeling linked with cutting? Relief, Relief is not actually a feeling state. It's not a feeling. In a, I know it does. It, I, well, really, it seems like it. Well, that's a long discussion. We're going to get to it, too, by the way. Yes? Numb. Numb? Nope, not a feeling. Not a feeling embedded in the feeling state. How about euphoria? Being in control. Being in control. Okay. okay. Well, I mean, these the numb, relief, that kind of stuff, they're not obviously not true. <laughs> okay. Um, some of this stuff took me a long time to figure out. <laughs> so, But euphoria, being in control... Um, being like the other girls, might, these are all very intense positive feelings that might be embedded in the feeling state. Okay? Um, now, how do we, so we're always either avoiding a feeling when we're looking at a behavior, when we're looking at a destructive behavior, we're either avoiding a feeling, feeling or we're seeking a feeling is what's really going on. Now, there's the concept in therapy of traumatic recapitulation. Okay? 
that we go and repeat traumas. And I'm saying, no, that doesn't happen. It may be a consequence. I'm not saying we don't see something that looks like that. But why would somebody repeat a trauma? If their survival law is correct, and I'm saying it absolutely is correct, if the survival law is correct, then nobody's going to repeat a trauma. If something is only painful, people avoid it. Okay? You know, somebody has car wreck, <laughs> and you know, something is there in some play location, they're not going to go back and repeat it again. So why do people apparently do this? And the answer is because there's a positive feeling link with it. And where do we usually see something like traumatic, what we call traumatic recapitulation? is codependence, right? As I said, there must be a positive feeling link with it. And we talk about more and more full discussion about, fuller discussion about uh, codependence. We'll talk about all the feeling states, the positive feelings linked with codependence. Okay. So this is a whole new way of thinking about a lot of things. Because anytime there is something painful and somebody keeps seem seemingly repeating it, you know that there's a positive feeling link with it. And if you process it, they will stop doing it. Whatever it is, it's painful. If there's only thing left is pain, they're not going to do it again. They will avoid it. It's really that simple. So one of the first things we have to do, and, um, and this is going to be, is, is often a real challenge. A person comes in and starts telling, telling you their story, and the first thing you have to assess, are they avoiding a feeling or seeking a feeling? It's not, you know, sometimes it's just not, sometimes it's obvious, and sometimes it's really not obvious what's going on. On the other hand, behaviors do double duty sometimes. <laughs> sometimes they include they're both avoiding a feeling and seeking a feeling at different times. One time they're used because they're anxious, and another time they're, uh, they're wanting to seek the feeling of belonging, let's say. Which one do you work on? Depends on what's in the room with you, what they're telling you. And so, I mean, if they're doing, if it does double duty, then you have to do both. You can't just do one. And the feeling state addiction protocol focuses on the pleasure part of this dynamic, okay? Um, you can use image, to avoid it, you can use either image transformation therapy, which I'm gonna explain more a li little bit later, or just your standard EMDR protocol. If you have a trauma, just go ahead and use their EMDR protocol, okay? All right, so what causes behavioral addictions? It was really, as I, as I So what you see with substance, substance, substance addictions is they are a combination, actually, of the reaction to the drug itself, like if it's cocaine, the dopamine rush, for example, and any other psychological or behavioral type of feeling states. You can have both. You can not only just have the reaction, but like with marijuana, you could have a euphoric reaction to marijuana, plus the feeling of, I fit in, I'm, or I'm special, or I belong. That's also part of it. So you can have multiple feeling states associated with substance addictions. Alcohol cannot, you know, alcohol, a very common one is fitting in, belonging, connection. Very common with that, okay? And you may, as well as any reactions to the alcohol itself. So anytime you're dealing with a substance addiction, you have both the reaction to the drug or alcohol, as well as all your behavioral, the process type of addictions that could be there. In other words, the feeling states. Is that clear? Okay.